Welcome to Electro Online. Now here's a problem that I'm very interested in because it deals with astronomy. They're dealing with two stars. Let's read the problem. Two spherical stars, A and B, emit black body radiation. The radius of A is 400 times the radius of B. And A emits 10 to the 4 times the power of B. The ratio lambda A over lambda B is equal to N, where lambda A and lambda B are the wavelengths of the peaks of their black body radiation curves, I should say, probably put in the word curves. There we go. And they want to know the value of n. They want to know the ratio of lambda a to lambda b, and n is a number somewhere between 1 and 9. Wow, how do we do this? Well, first of all, let's draw a diagram so we can kind of get a feel for it. So here we have star a, and then we have star b. And star B is obviously much smaller than star A. It's not quite the ratio there. But here's radius A, and here is radius B. And they tell us that radius A is equal to 400 times radius B. They also tell us that the power of A is equal to 10,000 times the power of B. I think it was 10,000, 10 to the fourth, which is 10,000. So that's kind of the, what they've given us. So we need a strategy and we need to have some equations and knowledge. Well, first of all, this deals with the Stefan Boltzmann's law, which says that the power emitted by an object via black body radiation is the emissivity, sigma, the area, and the temperature to the fourth power. Also, we need to know Wien's law that tells us that the wavelength of a black body radiation curve is equal to 0.0029 divided by the temperature. So we definitely are going to need both of those equations. So since they give us the ratio of the powers, we probably want to do the ratio of the power output via this equation. And then, of course, what we're going to do here is we can figure out the area, relatively speaking, relative to one another, because we know the radius, but we don't know the temperature. But at least we'll get a ratio of the temperature, and then using Wien's law, we get the ratio of the lambda. So the idea is, Use power and the radius to obtain the ratio of the temperature, so temperature A to temperature B, which then allows us to find the ratio of lambda A to lambda B. So that's going to be the strategy. We we'll use the power and the radius to come up with the temperature, and then from the temperature we come up with the lambda. All right, let's do that. So first of all, let's, um, let's find the power ratio. Okay, so, well, I'm going to do one more thing. I'm going to come up with the area, the area ratio, area A over area B. So after all, the power equation deals with the area, not the, ra the, radia, the radius. So what we need to do is first do this, one more step. We need the power and the radius to first come up with the area. Once we come up with the area, we come up with the ratio of the temperature, so I think we also need, of course, area A versus area B, then the temperature ratio, then the lambda ratio. It's kind of a three-step process. All right, so we know that the area of A to the area of B is equal to pi, 4 pi, times radius A squared divided by 4 pi times radius B squared. Right, so that's the surface area of, of a star is 4 pi r squared and the 4 pi cancels out for both, so that means that the area of A to the area of B is this, which means it's 400 squared divided by 1 squared, and so yeah, so we get the 400 squared, which is essentially 16 with four zeros, that's 160,000 to the ratio, that means that the surface area of A is 160,000 times the surface area of B. So now we're going to take this equation, the power of A, is equal to E sigma A of A, temperature of A to the fourth power, and we divide that equation by the power of B, which is equal to E sigma A of B times the temperature of B to the fourth power. Okay, so first of all, notice that these cancel out, they're the same constants. The power of A to the power of B is 10,000 to 1, so 10,000 2, 1 is equal to the area of A to the area of B, which is 160,000 divided by 1 times 
temperature A divided by temperature B both to the fourth power, like this. So now we can go ahead and we can divide 10,000 by 160,000. So 10,000 divided by 160,000 is equal to temperature of A divided by temperature of B. And that would be to the fourth power, like this. So notice that this would be 1 over 16 is equal to the temperature to the fourth power of A divided by the temperature to the fourth power of B. And then, of course, if you take the fourth through to both sides, you can then see that 1 over 2 is equal to the temperature of A divided by the temperature of B. So now we have a ratio, which means that the temperature of A is only half the temperature of B. Now we need to use Wien's law to come up with that ratio. So here we can say that lambda sub A is equal to 0.0029 divided by the temperature of A. And lambda sub B is equal to 0.0029 divided by the temperature of B. So now we want to find the ratio. That means that lambda sub A divided by lambda sub B is equal to 0.0029 divided by the temperature of A divided by 0.0029 divided by the temperature of B, which means that this is equal to the ratio of temperature of B divided by temperature of A, which is the inverse of this, which means that this is 2 to 1. So in other words, lambda sub A divided by lambda sub B is equal to 2, which is equal to N. So the number we're looking for and that ratio between the wavelengths of the P curves of their black body radiation curves is equal to 2. And therefore, that is the answer to this problem. And what's tricky, I think, about this particular problem is that inverse relationship between lambda and T. So when you first start working this out and you realize that T sub A divided by T sub B is 1 half, and somehow you're looking for an integer between 1 and 9, you have to realize that when you convert from temperature to lambda, you get the inverse of that, and so it's 2 to 1 for that inverse, for that ratio relative to the temperature ratio. And that's why it kind of throws you a little bit until you realize, oh, it does come out to an integer when you keep working it. So that's interesting, and again, the whole idea is to, they give you the power and the radius, you need to find the area, you need to find the temperature, and then you need to find the wavelength of their peak curve. So it's a three-step process, and of course you do have to realize the power equation from the Stefan Boltzmann's law, you have to understand the Wien's law, and then you realize that if you divide one equation by the other, you can come up with ratios, and it's all about the ratios since it doesn't give you the actual values. So that's how you do that.